Hello everyone and welcome back Light of Truth Ministries. This is John Wienia and today we're going to be studying, after last week studying about Westcott and Hart, their translation, the RV, which was then later trans, uh, revised into the ASV, the American Standard Version. Last week we looked at Westcott and Hort and in their uh, translating community, their committee, their beliefs, their honesty. And then this week the Lord said, why don't you just compare their Bible with mine? That's right. God's Bible is the King James Bible. And as we go through the series, we're going to keep and continue to prove that. So, in this new Bible here, it has made over... 30,000 changes in the New Testament alone. 30,000 changes in the New Testament. The New Testament was completed in 1881. And then in 1885, the whole thing was. So was the Old Testament. And then in 1895, the Apocrypha was added. And then 1901, we have the New American Standard Version. Well, the first chairman of the RV committee, Bishop Wilber Wilberforce, resigned, calling the work a miserable business and protesting the presence of a Unitarian scholar who has been was added to the committee. Uh, what, is a, what does a, you, you Unitarianism teach? Uh, it rejects the mainstream Christian doctrine of the Trinity, or the one God, three different persons, made up of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They typically believe that God is one being, God the Father, and some actually teach God the mother and you can see that is crept into the ECLA which is a Lutheran church and then they believe that Jesus was simply a man and not the incarnate deity let's go over to 1st Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 and without controversy great is the mystery of godliness God was manifest in the flesh justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Notice how the King James Bible calls Jesus God manifest in the flesh. Right? Common sense tells you when was God manifest in the flesh? He'll be back at his millennial kingdom reign when he comes back. But when was he in history? When he came to die on the cross. I'll put my... This is 1 Timothy 3.16. Okay. So Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. The RV and the ASV, they changed this. Instead of saying God was manifest in the flesh they say he was manifest now who's he see that they're subtly taking away Jesus's deity you can see this the King James Bible emphasizes Jesus is God these modern Bibles as we go through these take away from Jesus' deity as God. But they changed it to He, leaving it to be an ambiguous or not knowing who He was. Yes, I understand a Christian, a saved, born-again Christian, should understand the deity of Jesus Christ. But if you give it to a lost, say, Buddhist, who has never heard the gospel, never heard of Jesus Christ, and they read this and they'd be like, He was manifest. They will literally sit there and be like, well, who was manifest in the flesh? So you got to think from God's perspective, when he's trying to reach the lost people, his will is not to let anybody perish, but come to repentance. 
You need to understand that Jesus is God. And the RV and the ASV change that. All right, Dean John Bergen, the brilliant textual scholar and Angle, Angleton clergyman, reports the committee members were bound to pledge a silence having received each a copy of the new Greek text created by Westcott and Hart, the men that we talked about last week, which altered the Texas Receptus 5,337 places. Modern Bibles today are about making money. All right, royalties are received from each edition created in the, instead of having the heart of preserving the text and getting people saved. They'd rather just make more and more revisions so they can make more money. See, there's a thing called copyright laws, which requ requires a new translation to have differences than from the last. The, the King James Bible does not have any copyrights. However, modern translations of the Bible hold copyrights and the publishers receive sizable profits from each new edition. From 1898 to 1979, there were 26 editions of the Nestle Allen Greek text alone. An average of two new versions of the English Bible has been produced each year since 1900. And it could be more now. There's over like, I think there's over like 2,000 different English Bibles now. They see in a translation of a Bible the chance of making millions upon millions for their publishing houses. And this is what is what sells. How do you account for the 135 complete English Bibles and 293 complete English New Testaments? That have flooded the English speaking world from 1880 through 1991. This is from Defending the King James Bible, page 249 by Pastor D.A. Waite. So it's all about money. It's all about money for these for these new translations. It's all about the money. All right, we're going to go to 1 Timothy, and now we're going to go over to chapter 6 and verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some covet after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Now this would be an error from the faith, denying the Trinity, denying the deity of Jesus Christ, changing God manifest in the flesh to He was manifest in the flesh, leaving He up to speculation. But now let's go over to Titus chapter 1, verse 2. In hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. God cannot lie. He is holy and he is perfect. Now let's go over to Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, in verse 4. God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judge. Every man is a liar, and God cannot lie. It is our job to believe his word when it says, my word will last forever, or his word will endure forever. The gospel is preached from the scriptures or it will never fade away. Or when he says his will of his word will be done to his pleasing, that it will. Now that we know that men are liars, and that they covet over money, let's go look at a thing where these new Bibles teach. And they teach a polytheism is taught. Theism. And we're going to look at Daniel chapter 3 and verse 25. In the RV, in the ASV, we'll see what they says. 
I will say, I will read you what the King James Bible says, and then I'll tell you what the RV ASV changes the phrase to. If you don't believe me, go look it up for yourself. All right, we're going to go over to the book of Daniel. Chapter 3, and verse 25. All right, the context of this is verse 20. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is getting cast into, this fi into the fire. Everybody knows this story. This is what the King James Bible says, though, at verse 25, when Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, comes over and sees this. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Nebuchadnezzar saw, he saw the pre-incarnated Jesus Christ. A great picture of salvation. Jesus to the ones that believe on him, protecting them from the hell fire. But this is what the RV and the ASV changes to. They change in verse 25 from the fourth is like the Son of God to the fourth is Son of the Gods. So according to this, the son of the gods, Jesus was created by the gods and they had intercourse with each other, which is just not true. If Jesus is born of a virgin by the Holy Spirit of Mary, there was no intercourse at all for this. They are teaching polytheism by mentioning son of the gods. This is not right. Jesus is the son of God the Father. I know the Trinity is hard to explain, but the God, the Father, is like the soul of God. You can't see God the Father. Jesus is God the Son, and He is the man, the, the man of God. Like, you can see my body. He's the body of God, and obviously the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. Man is created in God's image. We have a soul, body, and spirit. You see my body, but you've never seen the real me. You've never seen my soul. My soul is looking out through this body. Jesus is the body of God. They changed this into polytheism by saying son of the gods, which is wrong. Because if we look at Exodus chapter 20, Exodus chapter 20, when God gave the commandments to Moses, to the nation of Israel. Verse 3, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. This is blasphemy. And it honestly, I believe, tears down the deity of Jesus Christ. But then again, they're in for the money. And they're just hoping people don't study and read. Another thing that this version, these versions get wrong is your basic Sunday school teaching. I'm going to put child's basic Sunday school teaching. We're going to look at 2 Samuel 21, 19. My question is for you. Who killed Goliath? The obvious answer is David. Even the world today knows that because in basketball, college basketball, they have like a 15 seed. When it plays a 2 seed, you have a David versus Goliath matchup. Or 
are you going to have a David and Goliath matchup where you have the the weaker team beating the powerhouse team? So even the lost world understands this. So let's go over to 2 Samuel in verse 20 or chapter 21 in verse 19. Okay, 1 Samuel chapter 17 is when David defeats Goliath. The RV in the ASV has that. So we're going to see a contradiction in these Bibles. Verse 19 of 2 Samuel 21. And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines where Elhanan, the son of Jehir Oregim, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath. The Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver beam. So, according to the King James Bible, Elhanan killed the brother of Goliath. And in the King James Bible, the brother of is in italics. Well, the RV and the ASV, with their pride, they drop the italics, don't put anything in it, and they change it to Elhanan. Goliath. Now you tell me if the italics belong there or not. So you have a contradiction here. In 1 Samuel 17, it says David killed. But then now in 2 Samuel 21, it says Elhanan killed. Goliath. Some say, well, Elhanan is another name of David. Well, if you go down the verse below it, in the verse 21 in, the new, in these versions, it spells out David's name. So why wouldn't you spell out David in the previous verse? And plus, David's father's name was Jesse. Elhanan is the son of Jer Origim. That is far from Jesse. But you see the stupidity of these translators and their pride drop because they don't want the italicized words. They don't believe those could be the words of God. Well, maybe because they weren't in the manuscript and the King James Bible translators understood, well, if we didn't add these italicized words, there'd be contradictions and then you would make God a liar. See, I think God, the Holy Spirit, moved these men to use italicized words, and another teaching will show that these italicized words are needed. But in the 1984 NIV version, it says the same thing as Elhanan killed Goliath. And I think Baptist preachers just got on that and just ridiculed that. So in 2011 NIV, they changed it back. But they didn't italicize the words. So... They just put up the brother of. So they really copied from the King James. And by admission, I think they know it's the King James Bible is right because these Bibles compare itself to the King James Bible, not anything else. See, during this time of the King James Bible, the year before the King James Bible came out, there was a, Dewey, called a Bible called the Dewey Rhymes Catholic Bible. And in this very verse here, it says, it doesn't even have Elhanan. It has 80 dotis or a. I don't, know, I don't even know how to say it, but Adidotus was the one that killed Goliath. And, his name, and he was the son of Forrester. <laughs> so they didn't even try to correct that Bible. They, they went after the King James Bible. Why? Because you go after God's real words. The devil goes after God's real words. He knows which one is the real words. Another thing is, in these Bibles... And this is for all modern Bibles. The gospel is turned into the bloodless water gospel. And we're going to compare four verses here. We're going to look at Romans 3.25 with Colossians 114 and then we're going to look at Ephesians 
2, 8, and 9, and compare it up to Acts 8, 36 through 38. And then we'll see what the RV and the ASV have done. All right, we're going to go to Romans chapter 3 first here. In verse 25, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. So the RV and the AV actually agree with the King James Bible in Romans 3.25. They say pretty much the same thing. The last part might be just a little different, but I'll be gracious enough and say let it be, it says the same thing. But now let's go over to Colossians chapter 4, or chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse uh, 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. This right here, the AV and the RV in Colossians, it drops... Through his blood. Dr this drops through his blood in Colossians 1 14, losing the cross reference through faith in his blood in Romans 3.25. So you lose the cross reference, you subtract the blood, so you're making this a bloodless gospel in one part of, the, of your Bible. And people are like, oh, it says in another place, how dare you say how many times God can repeat something? If God wants to repeat something 64 times, then, then albeit he can re, re, uh, say it 64 different times. We're not here to change God. We're here to let God change us. Prideful men, you. Prideful. Just prideful. Evil. But the root of all evil is money so drops through his blood now let's go over to Ephesians chapter 2 Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 through 9 for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast so again the ASV and the RV matched the King James Bible reading here of being saved by faith. So these verses match here. But let's go right here. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8 and verse 36 through King James Bible reads, And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. King James Bible this this does not contradict because this says you're saved by faith. The eunuch had to give a profession of faith before he could get baptized. This is what Bible believers believe. You get baptized after salvation. Okay, the, AV, the ASV and the RV says the same thing here, but here's another contradiction because this uh, drops all of verse 37 so you're saved by baptism works contradicting Ephesians 2 8 and 9 there's contradictions in this in these Bible in this in these modern Bibles King James Bible there's none if you think there is you just need to study it a little more that's the lack of studying lack of studying by people okay another blasphemous thing 
taught by these modern Bibles. We are going to make up a chart here. All right. We do this King James Bible RV ASV. So then we're going to compare Isaiah 14:12 with 2 Peter 119. All right, we're going to go to Isaiah first here. What does the King James Bible say about Isaiah in Isaiah here? Who fell from heaven? Isaiah 14 and verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down from the, to the ground which didst weaken the nation? So according to the King James Bible, Lucifer fell. Okay. Let's go to uh, 2 Peter here. 2 Peter, verse, chapter 1 and verse 19. And the context is talking about Jesus Christ. So verse 19 here, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Well, that would be Jesus. So Jesus is the day dawn and star called the day star now this the RV and the AV reads the same this is the same but here they change Lucifer fell to the day star fell. Well, did you, if Jesus is the day star, did he fall? You're giving a title to Lucifer, or you're calling Jesus Lucifer who fell. That's blasphemy. This is blasphemy. I don't care how you try to go around it. This is blasphemy, and I will keep on saying it. Just like God, how he repeats stuff, I'm going to repeat this. This is blasphemy. Why are you using these Bibles? Seriously. Do you, Christian, when, you're, when you realize Jesus loved you and he died for you and you got saved and you're using these like this, are you really loving Jesus? That's my question, Christian. I understand a lost person maybe not understanding this, but Christian, this brings me up to my next point here. Of studying. Let's go look at 2 Timothy 2.15. What does the RV ASV do to study in? All right, 2 Timothy. Two fifteen. King James Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So the King James Bible, according to the Apostle Paul, who's our apostle, says to study to show thyself approved unto God. And how do you study? You rightly divide the word of truth. Dispensationalism. But the RV and the ASV says this, Give diligence to present thyself approved. Give diligence to what? They change study to give diligence. 
instead of study. Now, if it was said give diligence to study, that would have been correct. But give diligence, what, what does that mean? That is so, that's so vague. And the, and the reason why Christians don't notice the blasphemy or the bloodless gospel or that a basic Sunday school teaching for children is because they don't study. It's that simple. I have in my notes here, because you don't study to show thyself approved, modern Bible users can't tell what's right from wrong anymore. I see why, because the world's crazy now because of that. Uh, because you don't study, you can't believe in the promises of inspiration and preservation. Well, that's what God said. He's inspired His Word. He promised His Word. Because you don't study, you fall into wrong doctrine. This would be wrong doctrine. This would be wrong doctrine. This would be wrong doctrine. This is wrong doctrine. This is wrong doctrine. Because you don't study, you fall into sins. And to start justifying your sins with modern Bibles, like they teach. King James Bible exposes your sins. I wish I had more time to show you that, but I'm just going to go over some basic things that people cannot deny. Or I hope they cannot deny, because if they... Lord help them, that's all I can say. <laughs> you wonder why there's so much apostasy, apostasy and nobody getting saved. It's because the devil's winning this battle of the modern Bibles. <laughs> Another thing, because you don't study, you make God a liar and God into your own image of how you want God to be and not into the holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, mighty, the perfect, just, righteous judger the perfect God, the one who never sinned, and the one that loved you enough to die for you, and yet you want to change his words to fit your beliefs. You're wrong. You're a liar. You're a blasphemer. John 14, 23. And I have scriptural proof to say this. Because you do not study, and because you're using Bibles, Bibles that change God's words, and you say you love Jesus, you're lying. John 14, 23, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and, will, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. According to the word of God, you don't love Jesus. If you're willing to accept blasphemous teachings from modern Bibles, you don't love Jesus. And I don't care if this offends you. We are in the end days. It's either get saved now or miss the rapture and take the mark of the beast and end up in the lake of fire. But the gospel. Just because I'm a hard preacher doesn't mean I don't have grace. The gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. First Corinthians chapter 15. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins. How did he die? He shed his blood. He shed his perfect blood.
how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Faith in the blood atonement of the death, burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you do not trust this, you will go to hell. You will die in your sins and go to hell. RV, 30,000 changes. Correcting, correcting God's Word, the King James Bible. You can see Satan's underneath it because there's no other gods. Jesus is not the son of the gods. He's the son of God. And the blasphemous. The blasphemy. Blasphemy. These modern Bibles are all blasphemous. But I will show you. I will make sure I will go through each popular modern version just to show you. Just to show you. Because you won't believe me. If you don't believe me still, you go study and show yourself approved unto God. And my last question, are you saved? This is only salvation. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and life, and no man comes unto the Father but by me. Thank you for watching. I hope you get saved, and I hope you come back to a King James Bible. Thank you.